resume the meeting at 7.25 p.m. Please rise to salute the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome, Trustee Drucker. Thank you. Would you be kind enough to uh, pull the roll? Certainly. Anthony Granaccio is absent. John DeGrace. Present. Arnold Drucker is present. George Garden. Present. Linda Green. Present. Arnold Jackson is absent. Edward Powers. Present. Donna Tuman is absent. Kathy Weiss. Present. Jennifer Borzum. Present. Mr. Chairman, we have a quorum. Thank you so much. Um, do I have a motion to approve the December 8th, 2015 minutes? I'll make the motion. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any against? The motion carries. Um, reports of the uh, Standing Committee's Finance Capital. Uh, John, would you be kind enough? Okay. Uh, whereas uh, Orthopedic and Sports Associates of Long Island, with its principal place of business <laughs> at 205 Folder, Farm Boulevard, Woodbury, New York, has offered to donate a digital Kodak CR800 direct view system to the radiology technology program of the Allied Health Department to the Nassau Community College. And whereas the estimated value of the donation is approximately $13,950. Whereas the program has determined that this donation will enhance its current equipment inventory and the college greatly appreciates this donation. Therefore, be it resolved that the Nassau Community College Board of Trustees accept the donation, um, and uh, we gladly accept it. So do I have a motion to consider this item? So moved. And do I have a second? I'll second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any against? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Kathy, would you like to do more? Of course, because I just put a second candy in my mouth. But I'll be happy to go. Resolved that in recognition of distinguished and meritorious service to Nassau Community College, and upon the recommendation of the president of Nassau Community College, the following named retired faculty members of Nassau Community College who retired after attaining the academic rank of professor or associate professor are hereby granted the permanent academic title of Professor Emeritus with all of the privilege and rights accruing there too. <coughs> and this time I am going to apologize in advance because it's a list of 58 names and those people do know that they have retired but we certainly, I certainly think they'll understand why I'm not reading all 58 well, names. Well actually, actually I, I'd like to make a point. If you want I'll go every other with you. Let's, I would like to read the names. Oh okay because I did it for tenure but I'll be glad to. Of course right. I have a second opinion in my mouth. Oh. <laughs> Calvin <laughs> Andrew. Mary Ardis. Laura, here am I going to make mess names, but Lawrence Benendick. Lisa Bastienz. Robert Battle. Theodore Bennett. Stanley Burke. Jane Brody. Oh. Angela Bruno. Paula Carlo. Philip Chaffetz. Shoal Cohen. Richard Conway. Uh, Deborah DeSanto. Kathy Ekdahl. Jerome Ellabogan. Ellabogan. Patricia Falk. Ann Fitzgibbon. Vincent Giannasio. Shepard Gorman. Marilyn Gotkin. Barbara Gregorio. Norman Harris. James Hoyt. Kathy Jensen. Bernard Katz. Lucy Landisberg. Deborah, uh, Deborah Levine. Richard Lucian. Julio, Julio Marzan. Donna Milkrath Seidel. Myrna Nashman. Ralph Nazareth. Francis O'Connor. <coughs> Charles Owusu. Mary Ann Perverless. Patrick Rahin. Lance Regano. Linda Rohan. Philomena Romano. Jeffrey Rosenfeld. Sharon Rosalyn. Mary Ann Helmer Saul. Roseanne Scarpelli. Joanne Schmidt Festa. Frederick Stonefeld. Roberta Schroeder. Ines Shaw. Donna Sparberg. Marsha Spiegelman. Robert St. Angelo. Joanne Thiessen. Michael Tortoro. Henry Williams. Belinda Weiss. Peter Z uh, Zito. And that ends the list. James Barrons. Oh, that's a separate <laughs> <laughs> Apologies for the mispronouncing. Mm -hmm. so, so 
want two names on here with people you that I know well. You butchered quite a few of them. <laughs> Thank oh, you. God, oh, it, was, it wasn't Trustee Weiss, it was the candy. <laughs> well, it's a, it's a cough drop, it wasn't candy. Do I have a motion to consider this item? Motion. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Uh, Any um, against? Any abstention? Motion carries 7 0. And if I had known I was reading them, I would have made sure somebody told me how to pronounce them. <coughs> wrong. Okay. Want to just continue and do uh, Administrator Emeritus? I'd be happy to. I'll just go to the resolve. Yeah. Resolve that the Board of Trustees of National Community College hereby expresses gratitude to James T. Barons, Jr., for his years of service as Vice President <coughs> and dedication to Nassau Community College. And upon the recommendation of the President of Nassau Community College, does hereby grant him to the permanent title of Emeritus with all of the privileges and rights accruing thereto. Do I have a motion to consider this item? I'll move it. Do I have a second? I second. Any uh, further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any against? Motion carries. Jennifer, would you be kind enough to do the next item? Sure. <coughs> Resolved that the Nassau Community College Board of Trustees adapts the college's new sexual harassment policy as written by the Academic Senate Affirmative Action Committee with input from the college's administration and as approved by the Academic Senate. Do I have a motion to consider this item? I so move. A motion. Okay. Uh, Trustee Green and Trustee DeGrace. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any against? Any abstention? <coughs> Motion carries 7 0. Um, report of the interim president, please. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Happy New Year. Welcome back. Uh, since we last met, uh, back in December, at least one of the thorny items of 2015 has been at least partially resolved. And that's a topic that we've talked a great deal about here at meetings the replacement of lines. Uh, we had a number of people who retired, and as you all know, there was a, a debate about how many lines we could fill, how many lines we needed to fill. And uh, after a great deal of discussion, a great deal of consultation, a great deal of planning, the determination was made that a total of 35 lines were replaced, 35 representing seven from the fall, that is, individuals who retired in the previous summer, so those positions were, were replaced in the fall of 2015. 22 more academic lines in the spring, plus six student personnel lines, for a total of 35 lines that were replaced. Of course, we all wish it were more. Uh, there are certainly some positions that were debated long and hard. Uh, determinations were made that didn't meet with everybody's approbation, but we do believe that it was a good process and that we've done the very best we can under some challenging financial circumstances that I'll speak to in just a minute. Uh, I'd like to thank Dr. Saunders and our four academic deans for the process and of course all of our chair people for taking part in that. Uh, we hope that come next fall we will be able to fill more lines. Uh, and as I've always promised, this has been a multi-pronged uh, uh, approach where we will continue to try to pick away at these for as long as we can. My optimism on being able to fill more of those lines next fall is in fact uh, increased by something that I'm very happy to announce to the college community tonight. Probably the thorniest topic of 2015 was the debate that we took part in relative to the bonding of the retirement incentive. Uh, just to catch everybody up who might not have been here, uh, when we entered into an agreement with the NCCFT on the retirement incentive, the hope was, the thought was, the prediction was, that it would be a 10-year bonding that the county would approve. When they came back to us, unfortunately, they only approved a two-year bonding of about $7 million. So it went from payment of just under a million dollars a year for 10 years to payments of over $4 million for two years. I think Ina Resnick has used the analogy very well of you know, having your bank come to you and telling you that your 30-year mortgage is now a five-year mortgage, and please adjust accordingly. Uh, we could have done it. It would have been very difficult, but uh, as we contemplated filling those lines, I can't not tell you that we were very concerned about the amount that we would have to pay for that retirement incentive and how we were going to do that. About two months ago, uh, Dr. Garden approached John Kamen and just mentioned, somewhat conversationally, but I think rather pointedly, that the two years was not what we had anticipated, and in fact, uh, we would benefit, the college would benefit from a bonding of more than that. Uh, 
he turned us on it, and I want to thank Chuck Catolo and Nina Resnick, who uh, wrote letters, made visits. Uh, I attended the legislature, and I'm very happy to report that the last meeting of the Nassau County Legislature, our bonding was changed from a two-year bond to a four-year bond. So to continue with that math, that means now, instead of two payments of just over $4 million, we have four payments of just under $2 million, a marked difference. And that's why I'm a little bit more optimistic about next year. Uh, it's not everything we had hoped for, but it's certainly a better financial picture. Uh, it loosens the noose just a little bit that we were feeling, and I hope that as we plan ahead for the, the fall of 2016, that it will further inform the efforts that we make to uh, fill even more lines. And I'm more optimistic in saying that than I was uh, last Dece in December. A couple of other announcements. Uh, oh, and by the way, uh, the legislature approved that, and so did NIFA. Uh, that was an additional step that we went through. Uh, we weren't quite sure whether they had jurisdiction over our finances or not, but as long as they were approving it, we let them have jurisdiction. Uh, Middle States uh, is coming up on March 13th, 14th, and 15th. Our visiting committee has been appointed, and in fact is posted on the, de the college's website uh, under the uh, Middle States section on the website, as is the final copy of the full report that will be mailed, I believe tomorrow, to the members of the committee. Uh, there'll be lots more information about Middle States as we get closer to those dates, but feel free to take a look at that final report and also to peruse the individuals who will be visiting the college in mid-March. Uh, I'd like to also congratulate all of our uh, faculty who have been named emeritus. Uh, I got the easy part of this job because I don't have to read all their names, thank you very much. Uh, but there are 12 other names that I would like to read because I've also been made aware that uh, 12 of our students uh, have been nominated through Phyllis Kerlin's office for a SUNY Chancellor's Award. And uh, I've taken it to, I've, I've, I've decided to meet with all of them to prepare the letter that I uh, will be sending to endorse their application. And those meetings have been absolutely wonderful. Uh, if there's one theme that goes through all of the meetings, and I've had 10 of the 12 of them already, um, 10 of the 12 who I have to meet with, because two of the people I don't feel I have to meet with, I'll explain that in a minute, um, is that they wish this were a four-year college. They wish they could stay. Because as they talk about the faculty, they talk about the experiences they've had, um, yes, there's a little bit of trepidation about going anywhere new, but boy, there is a real comfort level here and a real appreciation. And as one young man said to me today, uh, he's looking for another college that he can find to be inspiring, because that was the way that he labeled his experience here at Nassau. And I, I thought that was great. Uh, the 12 students who have been nominated and uh, who uh, will be nominated for a SUNY Chancellor's Award are Jennifer Borsum, who I did not feel a need to meet with to write a letter because I had an opportunity to write with Jennifer. Frank Catrone, Kaylee Fryer, Tiana La Rosa, Stephen McMahon, Randy Perez, Elizabeth Buccieri, Juliana Dykstra, president of our student government, another student I've gotten to know pretty well, Caitlin Gaffey, Sarah Mayel, Jillian Pallone, and Edward John E.J. Rodriguez. Uh, some wonderful meetings with them. Uh, and very, again, if, if Randy Paradise thought this place was inspiring, these meetings have been inspiring as well. Uh, the last item I have to report is I've been invited to represent the college at the Governor's State of the State address tomorrow, and I will be driving up to Albany bright and early tomorrow morning. Uh, anxious to hear uh, about the state's commitment to public education. Uh, those reports over the last couple of years have not been that great. Uh, hopefully, we will see a bigger commitment this year financially. Uh, it is an election year, that gives one hope, uh, and I, I hope that the governor will make some positive statements about public education tomorrow, including uh, community colleges, which he did not have very many nice things to say about last year. Uh, I hope he will have some po more pleasant things to say tomorrow, and I'll be happy to report back at the next meeting. Thank you. All right, we're going to continue on with uh, the speakers list. Phyllis Kerland. <coughs> We get presents. <laughs> we get presents. I thought this was only at the beginning of the year. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Thank you, Phyllis Carolyn from Student Personnel Services. Uh, we had freshman orientation today. It was very successful, as always. We had about 200 students who came, and they walked around the campus, learned about our student services, about our academics, and I particularly want to thank the 17 administrators and faculty members who came today and spoke to the students in small groups of 15 to 30 people about Nassau and what it takes to be a successful college student. Some of them are here tonight. An example was set by Maria Canzati, our Vice President, 
as well as, let's see, I'm seeing Chester Barkin, our red straw, who is there, Gene Cornbluth, who is there, um, and as I said, a total of 17 people, and we thank them very much. And these are what we gave the freshmen, and here you'll find some frequently asked questions about the college, tips on how to put your best foot forward, calendars about the college, list of clubs, and a little gift, it's a flashlight, I just want to tell you in order to open it, in order to turn on you have to open it, unscrew it, and take out the plastic tab. So don't think that we're giving people dud flashlights, you have to open it properly. But we really appreciate all the cooperation. And uh, I also want to thank the board on one other thing. I am the chairperson of the Affirmative Action Committee, Subcommittee on Sexual Harassment Education. And on behalf of our large subcommittee of 25 people from all across campus, we thank you for approving this policy tonight, which puts us in compliance with New York State and federal law. Of course, I understand they're changing that as fast as we can manage to comply with it, but we're doing our best. And tell you that, oops, and I just wanted to tell you that the Affirmative Action Committee remains a model of how administration, thank you, Dave, and faculty, thank you, can work together. And we need to thank our Affirmative Action Officer, Craig Bright, our College Attorney, Al Brodsky, in particular, for their assistance and actually their direction on writing this policy. Um, it really couldn't have been done without their firm hand. And thank you very much for approving it. Thank you. I'll be your not to get here. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. essential part of the governance structure at, of the college, the leaders of the Senate should be extended the courtesy of being able to speak for more than three minutes. So I ask the board to respond to this request before I speak. We'll take it under advisement. Just keep it in three minutes for right now. Okay. Uh, well, good evening. I hope everyone had a happy, healthy holiday. Uh, I have two topics uh, to, talk, to address with the board and get in the public record. First, I want to correct the president's statement. I'm kind of disappointed that you indicated um, that Phyllis was, uh, office was responsible for the Students' Chancellor's Award. Um, that actually is part of the work of the Senate Student Activities Committee. There's a lot of members on the committee. Uh, Phyllis's office does do a lot of work in making that happen, but I would hope that you would acknowledge the Senate's work in the future. Please allow me to acknowledge uh, the work Is that my three minutes, please? Yeah. No, not at all. I want to do it right away. <laughs> okay. Please allow me to acknowledge the work in the Senate, and I will be more careful about who I thank. Thank you. Okay, uh, first is the need for transparency of the presidential search. Uh, on behalf of the college community, we request that the board conduct the presidential search more transparently. Specifically, we request that the board follow the SUNY guidelines for the presidential searches for community colleges. Section 4, recommended steps by doing the following. One, issue a timetable for completing the search, that's step eight. Distributing a system for rating the qualifications of candidates as devised by the committee, step 12. Uh, posting the interview schedule, including dates and involvement of the various college constituencies, such as the trustees, faculty, students, administrative leaders, staff, and collective bargaining units, step eight. Right now, the college community is in the dark. We have no idea what's going on with, this, with presidential search. And again, that's really against SUNY policy. Two, expectations of the new interim chief counsel. Um, we would like to welcome our new interim chief counsel, chief counsel, Kate Murray, to NCC. I'm a resident of the town of Hempstead, and I appreciate your service as, as supervisor. Of special note, I'm, a, uh, I'm an expert in water. I'm a water resource scientist, and I can attest to the town's water departments uh, as being one of the best in the state. And, uh, and it supplies Nassau Community College with its water, by the way. Uh, the Senate Executive Committee asked that the BOT adhere to the college's affirmative action plan, especially since just passed it tonight, uh, regarding hiring administrative staff and commit to proceed, um, to proceed with the full affirmative action search as per college policy. When Chuck Cotola joined NCC in 2002, he was well positioned to lobby the county government 
since he was leaving a position of, of uh, counsel to the county legislature. Almost immediately, he was able to get the county contribution to be increased by 3.9% instead of the 1.9% that was proposed by the county executive at the time. This increase, compounded each year, lasted until 2009 and provided over $20 million of extra funds to the college. For the last six years, the county contribution has been frozen at 2009 levels. The county contribution now is only 24% of our revenues, requiring our students to cover almost 40% of the college revenues. Interim Chief Council Murray is similarly positioned, as Chuck was 14 years ago, to get the county to provide an increase that <coughs> is equal to the inflation rate. She has perhaps even better connections than the current county, uh, with the current county leadership than Chuck had. Accordingly, the board should share our expectations that we should expect better support from the county this year. Perhaps more important, um, actually, uh, I'm going to skip that because it was dealing with the bonding, and I was glad that uh, you were able to resolve that. I want to thank the board and Jorge for resolving the bonding issue. David, what makes you yes. think that the search committee is not in compliance with SUNY guidelines? How I, I didn't say in compliance. You I said, said, like them to, I said to, to be in compliance with the guidelines. Yes. And what makes you think we're not? We have no information. Well, but, but what makes you think no you made a statement that we're not? We, well, we don't know. But can you, you pro can give us the reason? Can you give us the information? Why would you can you privy, tell us? Why would you be privy to the names of 79 people who apply? I didn't ask and that. And when we interviewed them, why would you be privy Marty, to them? I didn't ask that. You know what? We wouldn't even That's know. That's what you think we about transparency. We wouldn't even know that you interviewed. We wouldn't even know that you interviewed people. You're not supposed if it, to. If it wasn't for the student president who said, I'll see you on the weekend. And then, and then Trustee uh, Jackson and said, issues here, we don't need to know the names. We want to know what's going on. Are we going to have a president? There's we a, haven't had one there's in a search, we haven't had guys, many guys, years. Guys, search David, committee. David Arnie, hold on. What's you that? don't think we have a right to David, have a college David, president? You have a right David. to trust the search committee that includes members of your constituency. But we That's don't know what's right going on. Stay the members of your constituency. David, 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 we don't, David. You're not allowed to say anything to us. Because for obvious reasons. Exactly. So we don't know what's going on. Publish to the campus what's going on. David, I have no clue. No hold. One second. The process for the presidential search has been proceeding under the guidance of SUNY, under the leadership of Trustee Drucker and Trustee Jackson. Um, they will be posting. We haven't done anything now because you guys are on break. As they go back in, they will start publishing the dates <coughs> to bring back the campus interviews. Right now, Ann Brandy has to schedule with everybody to make sure that they can all come back at the appropriate time. So right now it's a they're trying to get a scheduling issue settled. That's all yeah. And, and, and it'll be posted. And in due, if, time. in due time it'll be put it'll be put out to the website so everybody's made aware. Okay. Um, the committee has acted. It, it's been been mentioned to me um, that it's been done very, very well. They will be bringing Inform the, us, they, please. Inform but, us. David. But, we the don't process, the you're process, the process when you're supposed to be informed. Well, hey, SUNY, is that, that, okay. so there are SUNY members who attend our committee meetings, so and SUNY tells it. us when we can release names. It, it, they tell we us. We don't want to know the We want to know the process. The process. Just, just, process. just so that you know, yes. we, we as board members have two members of our board serving on this committee. Okay. We don't have the information three. either, and I think it's important you understand that three members. Three members. Three members of the board. So you may share the same concern but, uh, we have. No, because I entrust the members, our constituents, oh, who are representing us, yeah. to we have get four back, members, four members including our students, Sorry. to get Thank back you, to Lynn. us <laughs> and tell us the timetable at the appropriate time. We, I just want you to understand that it's not the faculty that doesn't know. We all have cons we all have people on that committee. When that committee is prepared to share, it will share it with all of us. We don't have any dates either. We don't have any information, and that's done so that that committee can work without pressure from anybody. That's David, honest, honestly, I've kept myself at arm's length from this process, and when Trustee Drucker and Trustee Jackson release the information, it, that is the point when it is made public to us. Until such time, it is kept under wraps. So there's okay. no conspiracy. It will, it, will, it, will, it will unfold in the time. I did not say anything that there's conspiracy <coughs> or things are being done inappropriate. All I asked for was transparency. Well, you know as much okay. as the Chairman Gardner. Okay. You know as much as he okay. knows. Okay, but that, that's a problem. I haven't had a press It's not yeah. a problem. Excuse me. You well, interpret it as a problem. Can I just say something? And, and I want to. Any policies David. that recommend that you keep the campus David. informed David. of the process, <coughs> not the names. 
Yes. David, and, and this is for all who are in the public eye, okay? I am sick and tired of everyone commenting that we haven't had a president here for three years. Yes, we have not had a de facto president, but we've had acting presidents and we've had interim presidents that have led this college over the last three years. This college has never been devoid of leadership. It's been devoid of a title and been devoid of a person and maybe some other things that go along with it. But we have never been devoid of leadership. With, with due respect, we haven't had an academic leader in six years. Okay, that's, that's your opinion. opinion. That's, that's, that's your opinion. That's, that's a different subject because he's that's talking about the vice president for academic affairs. your opinion. Affairs. Okay. Um, last piece. But it's, it's, it's linked wanna, to the president. David, I just want to correct one sure. other thing. Um, Trustee Jackson at the last meeting did provide a very brief update about the presidential search to the entire community, and it's in the minute. So it's not same update we all got. So you can't say nothing has been. But it, it was the impromptu committee. after the student SGA presidential meeting. Well, it was. The, but it was disseminated. Right. She, so it, it, don't, don't assume it, it was it, impromptu. It didn't seem very planned. But you're making an assumption That's that the she wasn't line. going to speak, and you can't do that. That's all right. Let's call it. Okay. Frank. And I just need to oh, correct the record on one thing. Uh, the title that uh, Kate Murray has taken is not Chief Counsel, and she and I have actually discussed this. I just want to be clear that uh, the title that Chuck had was General Counsel. Governmental Right, but never Chief Counsel, and uh, just want to correct the record on that. Frank. David, you have stirred the first controversy in 2016. <laughs> Congratulations. So now everybody's in a happy mood. <laughs> <laughs> He was a warm-up captain. Warm <laughs> <laughs> it was just a warm-up. Uh, so, uh, Frank Rosanda, uh, I thought that rather than uh, uh, fight you all, I would join you all. I am the acting president of the NCC at table. Don't turn the cue. And we are having an election next week uh, to find a permanent leader uh, for the NCC at table. I just want to say. Uh, uh, first, I want to say Happy New Year, and uh, I want to welcome uh, Ms. Green uh, to the Madhouse. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, and, <laughs> I, 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 I'm trying I, to bring sanity. Yeah, well, I, 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 so I think cause. I was witness to your coronation at the legislative, uh, the legislature. Oh, okay, and uh, the the uh, they did give you some. You, you know, uh, uh, a heavy load to carry when they said they expected you or were hoping that you were going to come to this board and bring some sort of uh, uh, cohesiveness to it. So, good luck. Um, Thank you. I want to say that as a member of the search committee, okay, uh, that uh, working uh, with the co chairs, uh, Wanda Jackson and Arnold Drucker, I want to say that. I think that you both conducted yourself uh, with professionalism. I think that both of you have conducted yourself uh, uh, with, with be beyond my expectations. And I thank just want to say much. thank you. Thank you okay. very much. Uh, uh, for that. Uh, so <clears throat> the, the thing I wanted to say was just that I don't want, uh, I don't want to belabor the point, but I will. The $13 million that it cost for the retirement incentive is not an unexpected blow to the college budget because it would have cost $13 million to keep paying everybody if they all stayed, right? The reason, yes, the reason we are in the hole, okay, is because of low enrollment, all right, and unanticipated uh, uh, issues, okay? Uh, so that's why uh, uh, we, 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 we have this uh, budget crisis. So, you know, come, and, and I do want to say, uh, Dr. Dolan, that I absolutely appreciate the fact that when we have a zero-sum game, uh, where it would have cost $13 million to buy everybody out of $13 million to keep everybody, hiring 35 new people uh, was a yeoman's feat. And, and I do appreciate the, uh, the work that everybody did to, to get that done, all right? And, but I do hope uh, that with a little better, I hate to use that word, careful uh, planning in the future, that even though we have this $2 million bill every uh, year coming to us, uh, that uh, we, we are not so conservative in our estimates of what's going to happen on this campus. Because I do understand that there is a philosophy 
uh, in, in some financial circuits, circles that it's, it, it, you, it, they, they would rather err on the side of uh, uh, losing money because it's always nicer to find money, all right, than, than, than not have the money, okay? Uh, but maybe with a little more careful planning, uh, we could uh, uh, anticipate our expenses uh, 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 and, and, and hire the full-time faculty that were absolutely <coughs> critical uh, to this campus. So, Happy New Year, everybody. Welcome. <laughs> okay, firstly, I want to cross this out because Frank said it. Um, I was on the uh, Presidential Search Committee, and I absolutely want to thank and congratulate our leaders uh, for the wonderful job that they did. Thank you. <coughs> Secondly, I want to uh, uh, welcome uh, our new trustee and uh, Kate Murray uh, to the group. And I'm saying this to the new trustee, I'm saying this to Kate. I've been coming to these meetings for about a year now. I'm a new, relatively newly elected president of the Adjunct Faculty Association. And there's one thing that's clear to me. Every person in this room has the best interests of the students involved. There are times, probably too many times, that we're at odds with each other. Um, but without a doubt, everybody in this room has the <coughs> best interests of the students at heart. And I want you to know that I appreciate that. The next piece. Um, we ran a fundraiser, the Adjunct Faculty Association, along with uh, the Alumni Association for the NEST. Um, it was a wonderful experience, particularly the night of the comedy fundraiser, because we all sat together and we laughed. And it was a great time. From the members of the CSEA who were there supporting us, to the NCCFT people, to our members, to Board of Trustee people, to the students who were there. It was just a wonderful night. And I hope that night is reflective of things to come in terms of us coming together, particularly once we have a new president, and redefining maybe the culture that we've been in for too long. If we work together, it's going to be a new day for this college. The one thing that's lost is the great work that the faculty, particularly the staff, is doing for our students. This is a state-of-the-art operation. And sometimes we do ourselves a disservice when we act less than professionally when we interact with each other. In terms of the NEST fundraiser, we raised $6,615 in cash that the NEST is going to get or has gotten another $500 in food. And we had donations. A, a wonderful uh, group of individuals uh, donated $750 to pay for the venue and for the comics. And we got donations of about $660 in uh, raffle prizes. So the sum total of that night was $8,465. Much of that, every time I went to shake a hand of a, a Board of Trustees member, I found cash in my hands. I found <laughs> envelopes in my mailboxes. And I want to thank you guys for your support, too. Tom Bruckner? He's not here. Paul? I've got, I've got two pieces of business tonight. Uh, I'm a little bit scared to do the second one now. <laughs> um, first, the Academic Senate Executive Committee would like to welcome our newest trustee, Linda Green, and Kate Murray, who, and I'm not quite sure like, what to call you now. You've got so many titles for you, but welcome. Kathleen and Kathleen. Kate and Kathleen. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> not sure. Um, the Academic Senate is made up of administrators, faculty, and students. 
and is the primary academic policy formulating body at Nassau Community College. With 27 committees that formulate policies ranging from curriculum to affirmative action to elections, we look forward to working with you to uphold Nassau's long tradition <coughs> of shared governance, where the expertise of all parties is respected and listened to. As Judith Jacobs said to, to you in the legislature, Nassau Community College is a jewel in Nassau's crown. In no small measure, due to our tradition of shared governance, and we look forward to your support in maintaining Nassau as an institution where students begin their intellectual and academic journey before transferring to other institutions, and where they can get the training that prepare, prepares them for successful long-term careers. So welcome to both of you. Thank you for joining us. Um, my second bit of business is the Academic Senate Executive is that this Academic Senate Executive Committee asks for information about the presidential search. And I heard what you said, and I understand there's things that you can't talk about. This is an issue of paramount concern to the students, faculty, administrators, and trustees of the campus. <coughs> but I'd also like to speak personally as a faculty member. And it's part of why we're, we feel so strongly about this. I've been at Nassau for 15 years, and anticipate being here for roughly 15 more. Like other faculty, I have a deep commitment to the students and to the institution. Faculty are the members of the academic community with the long, greatest longevity, in addition to many administrators who've been here for many years and will spend their entire careers here. I rec we recognize that too. Um, and therefore, we have a great stake in the decision of who will be president. Students will graduate, transfer, and move into the workforce. And we wish you all the best. That's what we're here to, to do. Board members' terms of appointment will end. But faculty members will be here for many years. And the decision of who will be president will affect me for the rest of my working life. So therefore, on behalf of the college community, but also of the faculty, we're eager to hear of the progress of the search. And would especially like to know as soon as possible, and again, as possible, we understand there are rules here, um, so that we can understand the remainder of the process and prepare for it. The, the semester will begin in a week, and our planning, organization, and preparation <coughs> for the semester are already in high gear. Among the questions we have are, when will the finalist names be announced? When are they coming to campus? What kind of opportunities will the campus community have to meet with them and give our feedback? And in general, what is the plan? We thank you. Thank you for your attention to this request. Okay. All right. Um, I'd like to just step in for a minute. And I'd like to, on behalf of the Board of Trustees, um, welcome the degree now to the board. Um, I'd also like to welcome Kate Murray into the position of uh, Intergovernmental Affairs. And I think that we need to just stop and for a moment just talk about Chuck Atola. Chuck Atola has given 13 years of service here um, to the college. Um, his position is an intergovernmental liaison, an expert in legislative process, a uh, former member of a United States Senators, uh, cabinet staff, uh, leads to a wealth of experience that nobody on this campus uh, can understand. Uh, the back office operations of the United States Senate, the Nassau County Legislature, and the back office halls of Nassau Community College are, are varied and sundry, but Chuck Atola has handled them all with <coughs> dignity, uh, political aplomb, and grace. Grace under fire. Um, I, and for members of the members of the board of trustees, would like to say thank you very much for your years of service, Chuck. You will be sorely missed, and you can't escape because I do have your number. So I'd like to just give you a round of applause. <laughs> It has been an interesting time. 
Um, but I do appreciate the support that I've been given. And again, I want to thank you for those very generous remarks. Thank you. Any other comments from the board? Uh, if not, the next Monday is capital meeting schedule for Tuesday, February 9th, 2016, at uh, 5 p.m. followed by the board, full board meeting. The board will open a public session between 6.15 and 6.30 and resume the public session at approximately 7.30 p.m. I request a motion to adjourn the meeting. Do I have a motion? I'll make the motion. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, any against? Motion carries. Meeting starts at 8.05. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.